জাংশন কে ফরওয়ার্ড ব্যাস্ট করছি সব সময় আমার এমিটার বেস জাংশন ফরওয়ার্ড করতে হবে এরপরে যে যে যেটা কারেন্ট ডিউ টু ইনজেকশন फ्रॉम এমিটার এটা তো ম্যাম ডিপেন্ড করবে যে বেস এমিটার জাংশনে যে ভোল্টেজটা দিয়েছি তার উপরে আমরা কমন বে কনফিগারেশনে এখন ইনপুট ক্যারেক্টারিস্টিক্স আছে যেখানে এমিটার কারেন্ট ভার্সেস পটেনশিয়াল অ্যাপ্লাইড ইন ওই এমিটার এন্ড বেস জাংশন সেখানে তাহলে কালেক্টর বেস জাংশনের উপরে কালেক্টর বেস জাংশনের পটেনশিয়ালের উপরে কেন এফেক্ট আসছে মানে ওটা এফেক্ট আসলে তো ম্যাম শুধু আইসিটা ইনক্রিজ করে আই বিটা কমে যাবে কিন্তু এমিটার কারেন্ট তো কখনোই ইনক্রিজ করতে পারবে না কারণ এমিটার কারেন্ট অনলি ডিপেন্ডস অন দা বেস এমিটার পটেনশিয়াল ডিফারেন্স আর একটা জিনিস আছে এই যে আমরা বায়াস করি গাই ক্যারিয়ার ইনজেকশন হয় এবং এই তার এর পরে তোমাদের একটা পাওয়ার ডিভাইস পড়াবো দেখবে এই যে ইনজেক্টেড ক্যারিয়ার কত এফিসিয়েন্টলি বেস রিজিয়ান থেকে সরে যাচ্ছে বুঝেছো তার উপর তোমার ইনজেকশনটাও এফেক্টিভ হবে इलेक्ट्रन गुलवर्ड बने যত এফিসিয়েন্টলি ইনজেক্টেড মাইনরিটি ক্যারিয়ার লিভস দা ক্যারিয়ারস লিভ দা বেস্ট রিজিয়ন ইনজেকশনটা তত এফিসিয়েন্টলি হবে अदरवाइज গ্র্যাজুয়ালি ওখানে একটা চার্জ অ্যাকুমুলেশন হতে থাকছে এবং এফেক্টিভ পটেনশিয়াল ডিফারেন্স বিটুইন বেস এন্ড এমিটার উইল বি রিডিউসড এক্সটারনাল ভোল্টেজ ঠিক আছে তার ফলে ইনজেকশনটাও হ্যাম্পার হয় সেই জন্য আমার যখন গ্র্যাডিয়েন্টটা বেসটা ন্যারো হয়ে যাচ্ছে গ্র্যাডিয়েন্টটা গ্রেটার হচ্ছে সো দে উইল মোর এফিসিয়েন্টলি ডিফিউজ ওভার দা নিউট্রাল বেস এন্ড উইল এন্টার দা কালেক্টর রিজিয়ন দেন ইনজেকশন উইল অলসো ইনক্রিজ ফর सेम বায়াস ইনফ্যাক্ট আমরা ধরতে পারো হ্যাঁ অ্যাকচুয়ালি আইডিয়াল কি আমার আইসি আইসি ইজ আলফা আই সো আইসি ইনক্রিজেস मींस আলফা ফর আ পার্টিকুলার ডিটি আলফা ইজ ফিক্সড so long as our base quit base doping emitter doping all are fixed that means once a bgt is fabricated then its um, alpha beta should be fixed but due to this early effect base transport factor value increases alpha varies so their ie also varies इंजेक्शन चेन्ज हो जा ইনজেকশন ভোল্টেজটা सेम থাকছে ফরওয়ার্ড বায়াস अप्लाइड সেটা सेम থাকছে কিন্তু ক্যারিয়ার ইনজেকশন এফেক্টেড হবে ম্যাম তাহলে ক্যারিয়ার ইনজেকশন তখন নিউট্রাল বেস উইথের উপর ডিপেন্ড করছে ইনডাইরেক্টলি কারণ না তোমার বেসটা যদি ন্যারো হয়ে যাচ্ছে তো গ্র্যাডিয়েন্টটা বেশি হচ্ছে ওরা অনেক এফিসিয়েন্টলি বেস থেকে সরে গেল বেসটা ক্লিয়ার হয়ে যাচ্ছে অনেক বেশি চার্জ অ্যাকুমুলেশনটা कमन बेस ना कमन एमिटर ना कि बाकी 
কমন কালেক্টটা তো আমি বলছি না কাজে থাকবে না দেখো কোনটা কতটা বলবো ঠিক আছে আমি আমি আরেকজন যে টিচার আর ক্লাস নেন ইনস্ট্রুমেন্টেশনে তার সঙ্গে ঠিক করেই ইয়ে করছি কারণ এই টাইমের মধ্যে তো কভার করতে হবে কাজে কমন কালেক্টরটা আর স্পেশাল ইনপুট ইনপিডেন্স হাই আউটপুট ইনপিডেন্স লো ওর অ্যাপ্লিকেশন আলাদা স্পেশাল সেটা তোমরা সেকেন্ড ইয়ারে গিয়ে পড়বে ঠিক আছে যা আমি পড়াচ্ছি না তা আমার शीट रिनार्सिया रही जा फाउंडेशन ठीक ना थे इनफरमेशन पे मैं ইলেকট্রন কনসেন্ট্রেশন টাইমস ই টু দি পাওয়ার কিউ ভি বাই কেটি যেখানে ভি ইজ আ পটেনশিয়াল অ্যাপ্লয়েড ইন দা বেস এন্ড এমিটার জাংশন আচ্ছা এখানে তো ম্যাম তাহলে ডিপেন্ড করছে না যে বেস উইথ কতটা আছে যার উপরে মানে ক্যারিয়ার ইনজেকশন ডিপেন্ড করবে সেটা তো করছে না আমি তো তাই তোমাকে বলছি এক্সটারনাল বায়াস কিন্তু একই রাখছি ইনজেকশনটা থাকলো কিন্তু ওই যে কুমার उटपुट रियल सिसटेम যেমন আমরা আইডিয়াল ডায়োডের জন্য কিউ ভি বাই কেটি করেছি কিন্তু রিয়েল কনসিডারেশনের জন্য একটা আইডিয়াল ফ্যাক্টর এই রকম মানে মানে আমি যখন কালেক্টর বেস কনসেন্ট্রেশনে একটা রিভার্স বায়াস अप्लाई করছি তখন যত বায়াসটা ইনক্রিজ করছি কালেক্টর বেস জাংশন উইথটা ইনক্রিজ করছে আর যখন ইনক্রিজ করবে তখন রিকম্বিনেশন ইন বেস রিজিয়ন এটা ডিক্রিজ করবে এন্ড দ্যাটস হোয়াই হচ্ছে কালেক্টর কারেন্টটা ইনক্রিজ করবে शुद्ध कलेक्टर कारेंटा इनक्रीज कर 
আমরা মানে রিভার্স ব্যাসটাকে বাড়াচ্ছি যখন ওখানে রিভার্স ব্যাসটাকে বাড়াচ্ছি ম্যাম তখন আইই মানে যেটা মানে ওটা বলতে চাইছি যে বেস কমে কালেক্টরটা জাস্ট বেড়ে যাচ্ছে মানে এমিটার কারেন্ট তো কনস্ট্যান্ট থাকা উচিত এমিটার কারেন্ট ধরে কনস্ট্যান্ট তোমার ডেডি ভালো নরমালি কিভাবে ভাবা হয় বলা হয় যে কালেক্টর কারেন্টটা বাড়ছে বিকজ স্লোপ ইনক্রিজেস ডিফিউশন কারেন্টটা বাড়লো সো কালেক্টর কারেন্ট ইনক্রিজেস এন্ড আই ইজ জাস্ট আলফা ইনটু আই সি সরি আই সি ইজ জাস্ট আলফা ইনটু আই মানে <laughs> জানতেছিল ম্যাম decreases okay but we must take a lightly doped collector because this collector should be compensation compensation eta ke amra p te convert korbo due to by compensation doping that means whole concentration na here must be greater than nd and again emitter so in d must be greater than this n tahole if we make it too high then subsequently are should be more heavily doped when heavily doped condition hole kintu ta mane base doping should be quite high because if we start with a heavy dope can do heavily doped collector your base should be base doping should be still higher than collector doping so our base doping be too high then all injected carriers will recombine here and also this whole injection will also be quite strong so transistor gain will fall so we always need collector doping too low so that base doping remains still quite low even if it should be higher than this one compensation doping is according to rule of compensation doping so we need lightly do collector region for this fabrication of subsequent base and emitter line. but then if collector is too lightly doped then neutral region of collector will also offer high resistance so current a significant portion of our collector current will drop across neutral collector so we start with a heavily doped layer n plus why it is ap layer you cannot epitaxy is an another method the diffusion is one another another method for growth of semiconductor layer the diffusion ion implantation and epitaxy so the if we want to make this 
region doping of this oval layer less than the substrate doping then epitaxy method is the only way so we form a layer epitaxy layer which provides this epitaxy method provides growth of material over a heavily doped material so it does not convert a existing uh, semiconductor it just a over layer is grown over this heavily doped so this ap layer doping is remain small so that this doping can also be made quite low because they are produced by uh, through diffusion and the gross layer collect the region is in plus to reduce the series resistance ke dile clear holo ha ha ma'am acha आगे दिन कत पढ़ान इंडिपेन्डेंट कलेक्टर रिजियन but it is independent of reverse bias of this okay the red gulo hote due to emitter injection forward pass current so ideally this current will be treated as this one the reverse current and it is independent of applied bias ei portion ta bolechi to age te tahole ami ebar output characteristic e jabo so output characteristic to ke start korte so we will discuss common base configuration and common emitter configuration in common base configuration we know that in active region our base emitter junction forward biased carrier side injected collector base junction reverse biased so injected carriers carriers injected from emitter enters the neutral base region on one side this is the minority carrier concentration electron concentration in p type this this point that depends on our base emitter forward bias and on the other side of the neutral base region it is the edge of the depletion region so here carrier concentration will be zero so this is the gradient so diffusion will take place and we will get collector current now this so this is an active region this junction forward bias this junction reverse bias so oh eta to bolini acha eta pore bolche so our relation 
current expression for this common base configuration base is common so emitter is input and collector is output and our expression is ic is equal to alpha ie so whatever the value of ie alpha the gain we will get accordingly ic now this ic this is the terminated current flowing across the reverse bias collector base junction icb collector base zero or open means our input is open or injection is zero so when i is zero then only current ic is icbo for collector base junction and it describes the cut off region in our uh, output characteristic we plot ic versus vcb ic versus vcb so i c will remain independent of this when i is zero so this is for i is zero this curve so i is zero it is icbo and independent of collector base bias so when input by junction is base emitter base emitter base junction is at zero bias we will get this current and if we reverse bias the junction naturally there is no question of current flow so this region is called cut off region when our input junction is reverse bias to under zero bias at zero bias maximum current is this one so this is the cut off region then we start forward passing the input junction that means i has only certain value so for i 1 million for this curve so ic will be alpha into i so ic will all be roughly it is same if your alpha is 0.98 it will be 0.98 million so i will write approximately one so i one two three four million we will get ic one two three four million so this is from this zero vertical axis so entire region this entire region is called active region because base emitter junction forward biased carrier injection takes place and we are reverse collector base junction reverse biased and we get current ic which is only alpha i fraction of this almost equal to i in that case we will ignore this one this is very small of microampere range and they are of milliampere range so delta ic is proportional to delta i and proportionality constant is the gain so input output relation is linear here which is appropriate for distortionless amplification such linearity holds in the active region only so this input output relationship is linear only in active region and so this region is utilized for amplification purpose okay so if there is some fluctuation in ie say we have applied some there is a forward battery to forward bias the base emitter junction in addition a small ac component is superimposed on in that case net ie will also have that variation of ac signal and our in our collector current the same variation will appear so if the relationship is not linear then we cannot use it am for amplification purpose because the different portion of the input signal will be amplified by different amount if non linearity exists and the output waveform will be distorted so for distortionless amplification we always want in linear relationship in this common mode configuration you will see that alpha is less than 1 so we are not getting any amplification in that sense and the saturation region yes so this is when the forward input bias base emitter junction is reverse biased or under zero bias we get cut off region when it is forward biased we get this interactive region 
and for this region our vcb vcb is negative means the collector is at lower potential with respect to this we are considering the this graph is drawn for npn transistor so our n type collector now its potential lower than p type this our collector junction is getting forward bias n type lower potential p type this higher potential so collector this junction starts for getting forward bias as we go to the negative side of the column pcb axis so collector based junction now with forward bias means from collector injection will of carrier it is npn so electron injection will take place into the base region emitter was n type the emitter injection is still there because our base emitter junction is forward bias then once the collector based junction gets forward bias electron will be injected into this so the net variation slope will be this one so this point it was previously zero when collector injection from collector region starts takes place then this point will be raised depending on the forward bias it is and then overall profile of minority carrier in this will be like this so slope decreases means a sharp decrease in current i see basically electrons are entering here so here there will be strong recombination will take place and when collector based junction forward bias such that it is same the injection level same then slope becomes zero so we reach is this region so the net current is difference of the two injection and it sharply falls and when collector based junction is fully forward biased then current is zero as slope is zero if we further increase the forward bias applied across the collector based junction we will see that now slope will be negative so negative current will flow and basically in this situation when this is greater than this one our collector is effectively now a emitter working as emitter and emitter is working as collector emitter injects the net injection is from collector side so collector injects so now collector is the emitter and carrier is being collected by emitter but will it is it will not work as good as our emitter as emitter layer is n plus heavily doped so injection level is higher and collector doping is lowest so collector injection from collector will also not be satisfactory so it is basically the device is then in inverse active mode and it is not encouraged for bjt because bjt is not a does not have a symmetrical structure unlike in mos mos device is symmetric so any one of the terminal can be used like this but we cannot use our collector as emitter and emitter as collector then because then the property of the transistor will be degraded but so this is the saturation region when our base emitter and collector base both junctions are forward now common emitter configuration the most important one now this is the expression we know ic and i so if you write in place of alpha we write it as beta by beta plus 1 and i is ic plus i b so we write it this is common emitter configuration so our base curve will be the input collector is out emitter is common to both input and output so our input current now will be base current and collector current the output current and as emitter is common we are not we will not consider the emitter current 
so we replace this we put this one to make to get the relationship between ic the output current and the ib the input current in case of common emitter configuration so we write this alpha in terms of beta and i as ic plus b so we get beta plus 1 ic minus beta ic so we get ic is beta ib plus icbo in place this it now becomes 1 plus beta icbo so ib is the base input current and ic is the output current so the input output relationship is ic is equal to beta i and this is the component associated with the thermally generated minority carrier the leakage current even if our input is zero still we get some collector current ic which is 1 plus beta ic now so we write it as we get it in common emitter configuration the leakage current in con common emitter configuration so it is i c e and o means the input open so input open means i b 0 so i c e o is the current when input is open that means input is under zero bias or under reverse bias in that case our ic remain ic o so it is the it is ib is equal to zero this curve so it is ic e o basically it is 1 plus beta ic b o so beta being 50 or 100 say so ic e o will be much greater than ic b o this one it will be very small but compared to that it will be quite large because it has beta times amplified <coughs> so this is the collector region for the time being consider only the solid lines now from here we say once we get this one we do this and uh, ic is beta i so ic is delta ic is proportional to delta ib in active region when for it, this is this relation holds for active region so our if some change in input current base current change in base current occurs the similar change will appear in the collector current but it will be beta times enlarged so now we get true amplification in principle it is also giving the amplification but as alpha the amplification factor is less than 1 so you will not get the enlarged version of the input signal but in case of common emitter configuration we get say say for this is for ib is equal to 20 microam beta is 100 so we will get ics 2 milliamp for 40 microam it is 4 milliamp that means for a change in input current base current by 20 microam you are getting a change in collector current which is 2 milliamp that means 100 times larger than input signal so thus if we add some small alternating component or input signal along with the dc bias then we can get the fluctuation and the same variation will appear in the उंडारि Oh. for this region our collector base junction gets forward biased so in from this region this region is the saturation region both junctions are forward biased this is active region base emitter forward biased collector base reverse biased and this is both junctions are reverse biased so why लिखनी 
درآمد Hmm. Now see that PCE potential drop across the collector and emitter terminals. So PCE basically um, there will be two junction emitter to base and base to emitter. So the PCB voltage drop across collector base junction and PV across base emitter junction. So PCB is PCE in common emitter configuration, we are applying VC across, it is the output voltage applied across collector with respect to emitter. This is the drop minus VB. What is VB? The forward bias of the base emitter junction, base uh, with respect to emitter. Base is P type, so forward bias means this is positive. So this one, Vc minus Vb, this difference will appear across collector base junction. Now, if we assume that base emitter junction forward bias is fully saturated, full strength, so it will, this junction will consume around 0.7 volt only. If you increase the net voltage, it will all, it can take at most 0.7 volt. It will not vary. So as we increase VC, whatever the value of this VC, it always remains 0.7. So the difference will appear across collector system. Now, oh, I can it to know. Here. When our VCE say is greater than 0.7, VCE is greater than 0.7, then what will happen? Greater than or equal to 0.7, our VCB will be greater than is equal to 0. It is greater than 0.7, VCB is positive. That means N type collector is at a higher potential with respect to base. That means it is. Reverse bias. When VC is point exactly 0.7 volts, say, then VCB is zero. That means N type collector is at same potential than as the P type base. So its reverse bias is now withdrawn, absent. VCB zero implies there is no reverse bias. Now, if VC decreases than 0.7 volt, then Overall difference will be negative, and that implies our collector is at lower potential with respect to P type base. N type collector is at lower potential with respect to P type base. That means our collector base junction now gets forward bias. Thus, when VC is decreased and 0.7 volt. The PCB gradually becomes more and more negative. And an extreme case when PC is zero, PCB gets the full forward bias. Okay. That means again the junction from two opposite junctions, carrier induction will take place, and total current will be nullified and we will get IC zero. This one. So it is around 0.7. So this is the boundary. Because they are independent in active region and in saturation as the carrier's induction takes place from both from the opposite direction, our net current, collector current is gradually decreasing. And when collector base junction gets full forward bias, current becomes so here it was VCB, direct bias applied across collector base. So it was this enter from right from this vertical axis, active region starts. And to get the saturation region, VCB is meant opposite polarity. But here, VC is the output voltage within which the drop across two junction is, junction appears. So we see that. 
from around 0.7 volt this active region starts and within this region both junctions are forward biased and such we get the saturation region where the current will fall rapidly in next year you will see that it is the characteristic of the transistor so we always we have to apply the current uh, transistor for different operation to a load in presence of load so from that we will get, we'll get some load line etc but what i want to say that the overall collector current will not vary much it will remain in this region and so the name saturation region seta ami ekhon bolte chaichi na seta tomader scope er baire note kore rakho these points if me note once our my syllabus is over then i can again tell the excess extra portions if you want that for the time being this is the saturation region this is active region and this is the cut off region and in each cases common emitter common base if we apply this reverse bias collector base junction is increased without limit in then at one point the reverse bias collector base junction will break down and current will increase rapidly this is bvc bvcb that means breakdown voltage of this this one similarly here also oh ekhane akini so this one is current for sufficient reverse bias appearing across collector base junction will break down the collector base junction and ic will increase so we are not interested in this region so our collector reverse bias must be limited either by this this breakdown appears due to avalanche breakdown the strong reverse bias applied as a likely doped pn junction because that is collector is likely doped or base is also likely but as for better performance of, of the transistor we make the base region likely doped and also as narrow as possible so there is probability that punch through or reach through breakdown may occur or as collector base junction reverse bias increases depletion region on the base side will extend into the neutral region so if it is quite lightly doped and also quite thin the depletion region from collector base junction may touch the depletion region if if there is a some depletion region if it is forward bias still a narrow depletion region will be there always so if these two depletion region touches each other that means there is no neutral region neutral base so transistor action will cease and there will be large increase in current so depending on this voltage and the structure of the transistor the breakdown will appear either due to punch or due to avalanche breakdown so this is the overall output characteristic of, of the transistor in common emitter and common base configuration so far we have considered the ideal situation that the this current active region current is output current is independent of output voltage output voltage but now we will consider the early effect so the base neutral base width is Shrink as our collector base reverse bias increases, so the base transport factor will improve, and the gain of the transistor will increase. Now the base transport factor increases, so alpha is B into gamma base transport factor and injection efficiency. Alpha will not. also it is there is slight increase in alpha due to this early effect this narrowing effect now slight increase in alpha leads to significant increase in beta 
because beta is alpha by 1 minus alpha. So we see that here the output current in common base configuration IC is alpha I. So there will be, oh, I mean, I correct for it. Okay. So this thing in active region, there will be slight increase in current, means slight voltage of the output current. Horizontal now, small slope. Current. But here, beta is quite large. Small increase in alpha produces large beta. So this will be voltage dependence of this collector current becomes much more prominent in case of common emitter configuration in the active region as beta is IC is beta IV. So then practically, we will get such inclined characteristics these are dotted. And if we, and as base current increases along this direction, we will get ICs as beta IV. But if we extend this coil like characteristics on the other side, then they will converge to a point. This voltage VA on the extended voltage axis, it is basically it is called early voltage as it is basically the measure of the early effect. How the early effect is influencing the characteristics from this VA, we can have that idea. Because higher the value of VA, they will be more parallel. So early effect will be less prominent. And smaller the VA, voltage dependence will be more prominent. So this is the then the output. Okay, Just You should note it. I think this one. Ek to write it. Now only visit it. Poor. I'm going to extra page. Just just at a remunerate the holy of a lecaro or cane. I'm just explaining the, the next proceed. Kuri output characteristic a kuno karo kuno shondo name clear. Next consequence of early effect as VCB increases. W decreases. I am doing it CBCB reverse bias. So as reverse bias increases, base, base becomes narrower. So less recombination during base transport. So, so slight increase in alpha and considerable increase in beta. By any chance, what did you say about the next day? What did you A consequence of our effect. Did it discuss? <laughs> As W decreases, neutral base width reduces, slope of minority carrier profile in base increases, so I increases, I increases, I increases. Possibility of the depletion region sweeping the entire base width. Ma'am, 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 W to sorry. W to a shetaki or take a base with a naki base collector at a neutral region with the neutral region with the it out to width of neutral base between two depletion region width of neutral base. W B hooks it one metallurgical this separate metallurgical action. WP is fixed during fabrication, it is fixed on per particular device, but effective width of the neutral base region over which the minority carriers will diffuse. That decreases as our reverse bias increases. The third point possibility of the depletion region sweeping the entire base width for the large enough VCB reverse bias large enough collector base voltage. 
so this causes almost a short circuit condition and therefore an uncontrolled current this is a punch through condition now parameters controlling the values of alpha and beta parameters which influence our current gain so base with w if w decreases ha bolo ager point ekta bujhte parlam na ta ekbar ekta repeat kore den third point ha 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 ma'am eta hocche consequence of early effect is due to early effect base with is reduced as car reverse bias increases so it will it may cause the punch through condition tai na as base oh, with is an extent so probability of punch through and once it is punch through means the current will has no control basically from the external source the current is being introduced now base with w decreases so base transport factor increases so alpha increases slight increase in alpha and significant increase in beta another parameter that influence alpha and beta is minority carrier lifetime if lifetime of minority carrier ami eta ki in general within base bolchi so in pn or pnp depending that will be electron or hole so the lifetime of minority carrier in base increases that means its diffusion length will increase so carrier lifetime increases means the probability of recombination is reduced so base transport factor will increase alpha increases and again significant increase in beta will take place then temperature as temperature increases diffusion length decreases so base transport factor decreases that means alpha decreases and beta decreases beta in reduction in beta but our beta is ic by ib so ic can be written as alpha e plus icbo and this is ib this icbo it is thermally generated component component arising from thermally generated areas and it is a strong function of temperature ni is strong it is strong function of temperature so icbo will increase as temperature increases and it will dominate this increase in current will dominate dominate so our beta will increase as temperature increases finally এখানে ডিক্রিস করছিল বাট এখানে স্ট্রং ডিপেন্ডেন্স অফ টেম্পারেচার আর ফাইনালি মেক্স বিটা টু ইনক্রিজ উইথ ইনক্রিজিং টেম্পারেচার দেন এমিটার ডোপিং ডেনসিটি এন ই ডোপেন্ট ইন এমিটার ইফ ডোপিং ডেনসিটি ইনক্রিজেস এমিশন এমিটার ইনজেকশন এফিসিয়েন্সি উইল ইনক্রিজ সো আলফা ইনক্রিজেস এন্ড সো বিটা base doping density if nb increases gamma epitar injection efficiency will fall because if base doping is increased the component of uh, emitter current due to injection from base to emitter that means in our case and in transistor iep net emitter current has two component ien electron due to electron injection from emitter to base and the whole injection from base to emitter so this base to emitter junction base to emitter injection will increase with doping in increase in doping in the neutral base so emitter injection efficiency will fall again as base doping is increased probability of minority carriers injected from the emitter side will have greater probability to recombine while traveling through the base so base transport factor will also decrease so as a whole alpha will in decrease and beta will decrease and vcb vc this its output voltage if they are increased basically 
the reverse bias appearing across collector base increases so w decreases width of the neutral base region decreases so that causes increase in base transport factor so alpha will improve slightly and beta will improve significantly so these are the parameters which can control our current gain base width minority carrier lifetime character doping emitter and base doping density and our output voltage before this consequence of IVF, which is the breakdown region. Now, the last topic, the ever small model. The ever small equivalent circuit of a BJT looks upon the device as made up of two coupled diodes, say NPN transistor. So, if we divide this like that, P region is half. So we are getting a PN junction diode, and here also a PN junction diode. Anodes of the two diodes are shorted. So basically, this can be viewed as two PN junction diodes connected back to back. And in this Ebert Moore model, we loop the device as made up of two coupled diodes. Couple diodes does not mean they are shorted. Two anodes are shorted. What is this? You can see the ever This model is not used for device and circuit design. For this circuit design, next year you will see that there are eight parameter equivalent circuit. Eight means hybrid. So small signal equivalent circuit using eight parameters is more useful for device and circuit design but this model provides a useful physical description of the bipolar device now this model involves two ideal diodes placed back to back this one so for our npn transistor we consider this one between emitter and base there is pin junction diode so this is an ideal diode anode is connected to base emitter cathode is connected to emitter and similarly the collector base junction it is also a pin diode where p type base and it is the anode is connected to collector so two ideal diodes placed back to back and two dependent current control current sources hunting the ideal diodes there are two current control current source dependent current control current source this one say for forward bias emitter junction based junction we in inject the car carriers that carrier reaches the output side and current gives rise to our output current ic so carrier injection in, in one diode appears in the other side and they are coupled thus the transistor action the two diodes are coupled. They are not two individual diode and just shorted their anode. Because in this one, that would give two dependent current control current sources shunting the ideal diode. Since current injected in one diode influences the current in other diode. And vice versa, due to coupling. The current sources account for the minority carrier transport across the base. This coupling is important. So long as there is this coupling exists, it is the model will represent the transistor correctly. Once the coupling is lost, means these component current components will not be there, then it is simply to diode connected back. But it does not represent a transistor. It will not yield the features of a transistor. As for example, it cannot provide the gain, which is the main property of a transistor. So it cannot offer the current gain. Gain for and it will cease. This is no more a transistor. What is this? So this sim say this will be forward bias. So PN, so our forward current IF in this direction and this is the polarity of the 
voltage apply, appearing across this diode. So Pn means P type base must be at higher potential than N type emitter. So its polarity is like this and the forward current is flowing through this. Now, this basically here the carrier injection will take place as it is this diode is forward pressed. This injected carrier will appear on the output of the other diode, the output circuit, and that will be Amadet Jamunamra Puli, IE Yamar input current, IC is alpha IE. Similarly, for this forward current, there will be a gain alpha F, IF. So there will be a current, constant current, because it is independent of the reverse bias and we are ignoring the early effect. So this constant current, independent of output voltage, this bias in this across this junction. So it is a constant current source. And current control means that depends on IF. When your IF varies, that will produce a change in this one. This. So this ideal diode and the output side is shunted by this current control current source. Similarly, from this side, we will consider this PN junction base collector. Base is P collector in. So again, when it will be forward biased, it will cause a current flowing in this direction. We are calling it IR as it is Opposite direction of current flow is opposite to this forward current. So similarly, as they are, these diodes are forward biased, the, there will be this various injection from this side due to this forward bias diode will produce a current in, the, in this side, emitter side. And again, that is independent of bias in this junction, across this junction, so it is also constant current source controlled by this IR. The output side, this current will control the value of this current. So basically, what we get in this side, input side, our forward current is IES, emitter saturation current, e to the power QVV by KT minus 1. And here IR is the saturation current on collector side, ICS, E to the power Q P B C the forward voltage by K T minus one. So these are the expressions of I F and I R. We have a collector alpha F is current gain in forward active mode. It is forward biased, and alpha R is the current gain in inverse active mode. That means so it is forward biased, it is reverse biased. Then it is the current gain. And for normal transistor operation in forward active mode, this junction is forward biased and this junction is reverse biased. And alpha F is the current gain. A, a expression tomate lag bena. Drop these two ex expressions. IES is reverse biased emitter based junction current, and ICS is the reverse biased. Uh, Collector based junction reverse mass in the current flowing to the collector that is ICS. You need not re remember this one because I this time I did not go through this carrier injection, so you don't know the expression. Then our IC from this figure, what we see IC is alpha IF, same direction. This is the direction of positive current. So IC means alpha IF minus IR. And here our IE will be alpha IR entering the device to the terminal, current is positive. So alpha IR minus IF. So IC is alpha IF minus IR, alpha IF. IF is this one. I mean, just logically, it is both the parameter circuit is saturation current component. And it is the forward bias voltage. This is alpha F, IF minus IR. 
IR also we have written this one. And I is minus IF. I is alpha I or IR minus IF. This one. Just logically we can write this thing, these expressions. So this model is valid for both forward and reverse static voltages applied across the transistor junctions. That means for forward and reverse active. Now, dependent current sources here, we can eliminate these dependent current sources which appear in shunt with the junctions. So if we want to eliminate them, that means our alpha. IR and IF cannot be made zero because they are forward bias current. In presence of forward bias, current will be there. So what we can do, we can make the gain alpha is equal to zero and alpha f is equal to zero. Then these two current source will not be there and we will get simply two diode connected back to them. Now how we can make this alpha r and alpha f zero? If we make the this region, base region too wide so that our base width is much, much greater than our diffusion length of minority carriers in base region. Then what will happen? The injected carrier from either side will have to travel diffuse to the peak, this wide base region, and they will eventually lost through recombination. So the injected carrier from this junction will not reach there on the collector side. Similarly, under reverse active mode, injected carrier from collector will not appear on the emitter. Because we have made this quite wide so that all of the injected carriers have, are recombined and lost while traveling through the peak base. Okay. That means our injected carrier does not reaches the collector. So our transistor action itself is absent there. The device will not work as a transistor so long as this base region is quite thick and injected carrier does not appear on the other side so current flowing through one diode will control the current flowing the opposite side that is the coupling so long as this coupling is there the transistor action will be present so by making this alpha r alpha f zero to making this base total quite wide, we cannot get the transistor action, and it now is simply two diode connected back. It is not a transistor. So we can never replace a transistor by two diode connected back to that. For example, by making the base width much, much greater than LB, all minority carriers will recombine in the base and none will survive to reach the collector. For this case, the current gain alpha f will be zero. Under these conditions, transistor action ceases. And we simply have two diodes placed back to back. For this reason, it is impossible to construct a transistor by simply connecting two separate means to isolated diode, diodes in series opposite. Isolated means there is coupling is absent there. Coupling is the most important thing. So a cascade of two PN diodes exhibits transistor properties. For example, it is capable of amplification. The transistor property, the most important property is amplification. So a cascade of two PN diodes exhibits transistor properties only if carriers injected across one junction diffuse across the second junction. And for it is the main mechanism for transistor action. So Everwald's model simply describes the gives the physical description of a transistor. What are the basic and how the transistor action takes place. It is the coupling between these two diodes must be there. It 
কিছু বলবে কেউ তাহলে আমি নতুন জিনিসে চাই এই দুটো এই এক্সপ্রেশন গুলো কনসিডার করো না বিকজ দেন ইউ উইল বি কনফিউজড এই রিলেশন আমার দরকার নেই সিম্পলি রাইট ইট অ্যাজ আইএস আইসিএস ওয়াট ডেসক্রিপশন এক্সপ্রেশন দরকার নেই Should we move to next topic? So I am moving. Can this just show you a look into? Now I am going moving to power device. लोड in between this power source and load we often use this power electronic circuit to feed the load this load by controlled amount of power to feed this controlled amount of power to the load we want we need this power electronic circuit it will control the power feed the load and all or also to convert the power to convert the wave form of this power source so control and conversion of power from power source to load we this power electronic circuit is needed and uh, for feed, to feed control amount of power to the load we use controlled rectification and for conversion of power means say our power source it is the uh, ac in nature we want to derive we want to feed the load dc that means in power electronic circuit we will use rectifier if we if this is dc and we want a this is so power to feed the load then the power electronic circuit will convert the dc into ac that means a inverter will be used here similarly from ac to ac and dc to dc also can be done then power conversion is not power is not converted but amount of this power is being controlled so power electronic circuit is used in between this power source and load to control and convert the power from this power device that means in this power electronic circuit we must for this at the conversion of energy and these things for this operation active devices are required and these devices will be used here for this purposes and that device must handle large power a simple bjt cannot do that because they are the specially the power devices are constructed by considering that they must handle large power so this type category of device is called power device the electronic semiconductor device that can handle large power and they are appropriate for this power electronic side so different power devices our bjt uni jung bipolar junction transistor this is uni junction transistor this is silicon control rectifier this is insulated gate bipolar transistor so these are the power devices we will discuss okay now this bjt we know that bjt there is base emitter collector three terminal two junction etc but when we will use a bjt in this power electronic circuit the structure of the bjt should be properly 
modulated. And uh, in uh, component detection and meter handling, this, this component detection experiment in uh, basic electronics lab, so experiment to follow. Um, did you see the power device, power DGT? It was shown. Do you remember that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, one power transistor was. Ha, power transistor structures are basically the structure basic transistor operation must be there must be there but the structure is modified so that this power they can handle able to handle large power so for power DJT, i mean it to note me just let me discuss for this if you want you can note the point in fact this one, this one is also discussed in during the so power DGT, for a transit, we know that there are neutral base emission and uh, electric region in a transistor. So we consider this doping of these regions are quite moderate, so that across the neutral region, uh, power consumption will be very small. Voltage drop across this neutral region will be quite small because for this whatever the current i or i c and the instance of the neutral regions and nominal significant power waste across these regions are negligible probability of that but that means whatever the bias applied they will appear across the two junction but now in case of power vdt the current flowing through the device is so large that even if the neutral regions are have neutral regions have small resistance, still current being too large, I into R drop, a part of the power will be significant portion will drop across the neutral region too. And that will make the power transfer in if not efficient. So the base and the emitter regions are heavy needle. In case of power DJP. The base and emitter regions are made twice quite high to decrease the resistance. But collector is not heavily doped because if we also make the collector doping large during the when the device is used as a switch, and basically our device, the switching property of these power devices are important for such operations control and conversion of power. So as a switch, both junctions will be forward by. So from collector side, carrier injection will also take place into the base. So if we make this collector junction heavily doped to reduce the wastage of power, collector injection will also be strong. And that will make the switch slower because large number of carriers will be there, minority carriers will be there in the neutral base region, and all these carriers will have to disappear to recombination so that the switch attains the off state. So, if collector the GGN is heavily doped, then carrier injection from collector side will also take place when the switch is on and it will make the switch slower. So collector is not heavily doped, but to, to uh, overcome this probability, we make the collector area of the collector layer large. In that case, its resistance offered by the collector will be tolerable, will be less. So emitter and base radians are heavily doped. And collector area is made large, its doping is not increased. So, collector offers a small resistance, and the collector is connected to metallic heat sink. A thick aluminium cap was there, so, collector is connected to a metallic heat sink that quickly removes the heat produced at the collector disjunction. Collector-based junction is the reverse bias junction. So the 
main dissipation our dissipation will take place across the calipervis junction so we add the metallic heat sink to the collector so that the heat sink allows quick removal of the heat produced at the collector junction so number one base emitter radians are heavily doped number two collector is not heavily doped but its area is made large decreased by resistance by the collector and a heat sink is connected to the collector to dissipate the heat generated at the reverse bias collector disjunction. And third point, the ohmic resistance between emitter and base is considerably reduced by increasing the area of contact. So for normal BDT, two thin termetallic where two thin terminals are formed. But that means in that case the Contact resistance, contacts are like point, just point, and this contact resistance will be quite high. And since here in normal case, I is quite small, so we need to ignore this drop, I into R across the contact resistance. But for power device, find it that for power device, current itself is too large. The device is handling large current and voltage. So, the contact resistances also are made larger. What we do? Basically, thin terminals, emitter and base terminals are replaced by a thick rod, rod-like structure, so that the contact resistances are small and drop is minimized. So, emitter and base resistance contact ohmic resistances are reduced by using peak emitter and base terminal. And collect, there is no such metallic connect where I have to take the collector connection from collector. The metallic heat sink attached to the collector itself behaves as a, is taken as the collector. And for these power devices, this power digital is within such specified. That means the maximum collector the reverse maximum collector junction voltage PC max, maximum collector current IC max, and finally, and more most important, PC max, the maximum power dissipation at the collector. All these values are limited and will be specified by the manufacturer. Accordingly, depending on the requirement here, the power devices. So this is our video. Next guy, at the ticket, sir, put it on. Oh, I think that you are going to feel it down. So I'm starting with this. Power BJT, just same BJT operation, but structure is modified so that device will be able to handle large power. Now, these power devices, switching property of these devices are most important. Now, it is called, the device is called uni junction transistor, UJT. Note that there is a single junction. We know a diode, pin junction, there is single junction. It is there is no control transistor, but it is uni junction, still it is a transistor. So it falls in some special category of device. Uni junction transistor, a single junction is there. This device basically is comprised of a n-type bar, lightly doped n-type bar. It normally it becomes always this N O N. P is not used. Because your carrier drift will take place and electrons have higher mobility. As we use it as switch, if we use the rely on the changing electrons, the device will be faster. So UGT is always formed by N-type semiconductor silicon bar. It 
it is lightly doped so that the this resistance offered between these two terminal base 1 base 2 is falls in this range 5 to 10 kilo rbb resistance between these two this b1 and b2 are called base so our alternate name of it is double based diode is there since there is a single junction it is diode but it has two terminals so it is alternately called Based diode, but UJ is the most popular. So, within this entire bar, near the middle of the bar, there is a small P junction. It is as if a point like junction is created. Small P region and the terminal taken out from this P side is the emitter. So, it has one emitter and two base. Now, this region, plus This should be point-like junction and heavily doped. So it is the emitter. a tiny heavily doped region which forms the emitter. Near the center of the bar forms the only PN junction. The, hence the name unijunction transistor. Since it has the control feature as in a transistor, it is alternately called double base diode. It is a transistor in Motunu. So we have a control terminal, three terminal device. So it is a unijunction transistor. Now for operation, a supply voltage VBB in the base region side, this is the supply. So V is repeated. So across these two base, base one, base two, a supply voltage VBB is connected. Now, as soon as we connect this, current will flow through this, through this entire bar, and it has quite significant resistance. So a voltage drop will take place across this length of this one bar. So near this one, middle region, where this P region is point like P junction junction is formed. It, in this region, the, we consider this line at the location of the P region. So this resistance is assumed as RB1 and the, on the upper half, its resistance is RB2. We divide the potential drop across this entire part at the uh, interface where PP junction is formed. So this voltage at this n type region adjacent to the P junction, P emitter, is VB1, which is VBB by RBB. That means VBB by RB1, RB2 plus RB1 into RB1. Eta, thoro. So this is V1, V2, the equivalent circuit. It is the point like region P. So we divide the resistance of this bar at this point P. So it is RB1, the resistance, the lower half, and it is RB2, the upper half. So the resistance at this point, drop at this point PP means in the n type bar adjacent to the p type emitter this pb1 is basically pbb by rb1 plus rb2 into rb1 it is written as eta is equal to rb1 by rbb the fraction this rb1 resistance by this lower half by the total resistance rbb that is defined as eta it is called intrinsic standoff ratio. And this eta will be determined by the location of this P emitter where the junction is formed. And it is once a UJT is formed, this eta remains fixed. Once the UJT is fabricated, depending on this location of the P junction, this eta will be fixed. It is called intrinsic standoff. Now there is the emitter terminal and we apply some 
power some source P E E. Emitter side, the external supply means emitter is E is repeated. And with a current emitting resistance R E. This is the connection on the emitter side. So the this is if we measure this voltage across this point, this is the common one, ground one, P1, and it is the emitter. So it is emitter potential P E. And if E is repeated means this supply source it is voltage appearing emitter term. so accordingly this can be considered as this one this is the equivalent circuit because this is the point p which gives the location of the single junction so die it is p emitter is p type and this is n type bar so basically it is a Diode where it is the P type and, and across this the circuit is formed. Now, what we how it will work? Now, say initially this is zero, we are not applying any supply here. Then, what will happen? This diode is reverse biased because potential of this point P, the inside of the bar at point P, it is PP, which is eta VBB, VBB by this plus this in this R1, RB1. And this ratio is the eta. So potential at the inside at the point P on the inside is eta VBB. So the diode P side no voltage is applied inside is at a positive potential of value eta VBB. <coughs> so our PN junction is reverse biased and there will be only the reverse saturation current flowing to this reverse bias junction. Now we connect this supply and we vary this voltage. So basically there is a diode. In type when cathode is the bar at point P, this is the this is this forms the cathode inside and emit point like p is the end so basically this is the equivalent circuit now if uh, initially we did not connect this so our diode p type emitter with respect to the n type region adjacent n type region is reverse biased by this amount pp pp is the potential of the point p inside in uh, DDN, so it is eta VBB. So inside is at a potential, positive potential eta VBB, and the emitter has zero voltage. So our junction, PN junction, is reverse biased. And a current, reverse saturation current will be the only current that flows through the reverse biased PN junction. Now we connect this supply and increases this external. And this junction will remain forward bias. This diode will remain forward bias so long as the anode gets some potential greater than this eta VBB, greater than this VP. So when the anode gets the positive potential, say cutting voltage, consider the cutting voltage, then VP plus V gamma. When the supply voltage is varied and at some voltage, VP plus V gamma, then the diode will conduct. So up to VP, it was like this. Because it is a power device, so these voltages, currents are quite large. So V gamma is only a fraction of a volt. So VP plus V gamma is roughly VP. But we know that the V gamma is always there. So 
this is the breakdown voltage i means the firing potential for the switch the switch will it is the off state because the large voltage is applied across the device but there is no current only the leakage current means no current so it is off so the switch is off when it is in this region now once the applied potential at the emitter side increases over this vp then the diode gets forward bias once it exceeds this vp by v gamma se so this it starts conducting then holes will be injected from this region holes will be injected into the bar in all direction but basically it is a point like junction so holes will be injected into bar and as it is connected to ground means lower side and it is at a positive terminal of the battery the injected holes will move in this direction the injected hole will not go upwards from this middle of this one injected holes from p side will move to this b1 the lower half then what happens in the lower half it was previously in tight so there will be electrons were the majority carriers and now the holes will also be there so the presence of holes will increase the conductivity of the region lower half so rb1 this resistance rb1 will decrease conductivity increases and the carriers induction takes place so current will also increase in this direction now due to as its resistance decreases the voltage drop this rb1 decreases so the potential drop across this the vp will now decrease potential voltage drop across this rb1 now decreases but we are not increasing the emitter voltage once our supply voltage is such that the emitter potential is is equal to vp the potential of the adjacent end region plus v gamma se then it starts injecting and we are not varying this external voltage once this injection starts this so it is it ve remains the same the potential applied that emitter remains same but carrier injection due to the injected holes presence of injected holes in this lower half of the entire bar increases the conductivity of this region so that means it's resistance rb1 the vp will now be lowered because the resistance is decreased so vp is lowered what does it mean our p type emitter is at same positive potential but n type region gets lower voltage means our forward bias across the pn junction is increased even if we are not varying this one so forward bias becomes stronger so stronger k hole injection will take place so this resistance will again decrease and the vp will further decrease so effective forward bias will go on increasing and carrier injection becomes more and more strong ei point ta khali bujhe nao is it clear or should i repeat we are not varying the external supply but due to this carrier injection resistance of this bar is being more conductivity of this bar of this portion is being modulated and effectively the forward bias is effective forward bias increases and carrier injection becomes stronger so this is a regenerative process once it gets the forward bias this process will continue it is a regenerative process we are not disturbing any varying any supply voltage but current will go on increasing and emitter voltage decreases drop across the emitter decreases এই রেজিস্ট্যান্সটা কমছে আমি ড্রপটা কমছে এভাবে বলতে পারি রাদার ইন দিস সার্কিট 
so emitter current i is flowing so this vee -E minus i into re drop across r is the v whatever be the voltage the for a particular current flowing in this circuit the drop across the resistance and the original source supply difference will appear across this one so as emitter current increases the greater amount of drop will appear across resistance so v will decrease so we will see here, this portion this is the special feature of this device stands to here our v once this vp is exit e exits this vp the current will increase but voltage drop across the emitter is decreased so if we will put a emitter here that will give the emitter current and the voltmeter applied across this will give the v so we will see that the emitter reading increases and v decreases you cannot see that basically once this point is achieved the device will switch to this point and we will see that there is a for this region there will be nominal current so for this if the corresponding current is ip there is a very small current nominal current and once this process regenerative process is initiated this region device will switch from this to this almost abruptly we cannot take measurement in this region and we will get a large current and small voltage small voltmeter reading and large current that means device here in this position it switch was off large voltage small current and in that region is the large current small voltage means that if i switch is now on and if now we increase the emitter side voltage it increases further it will behave as a normal pn junction diode current will increase as voltage increases because at this point the saturation carriers is the regenerative process stronger forward by stronger carrier hole injection then current increases b decreases again stronger injection so this continues ultimately there the resistance of this region gets saturated with so much hole injected from emitter and no further modulation of the resistance takes place so it becomes saturated and beyond that it behaves just like a forward bias drive so this is the ip characteristic for the like ei jinish ta dekha jacche na ken for a unijunction transistor na so we take an ashini so these are the regions this region one it is forward non conducting region normally for a diode we get that once the forward bias is applied it conducts non conducting region appears only under reverse bias for a diode for a pn junction but here we see that the forward bias region it is forward bias but still it does not conduct so there is a forward non conducting region for p applied voltage between 0 to pp we are ignoring the v gamma then in region 2 this, this is the negative resistance region slope of iv curve is negative so this negative resistance region occurs due to degenerative conductivity modulation degenerative conductivity modulation because this conductivity modulation in this region automatically takes place once injection it gets forward bias then carrier injection automatically takes place and it is modulating the conductivity of this lower half of the entire part so it is this negative resistance region appears due to regenerative conductivity modulation so we can in that case only how it can definitely act ha and in this region beyond that 
this region 3 the device is conducting large current is flowing and it is consuming very small voltage drop across it for this region 3 so it is forward conducting region as we get in case of conventional diode so there are three distinct regions and thus the and even if we apply the v negative v then at a large v when the pin junction will break down we can get a breakdown region also so in this region there will be this negative current will flow independent of voltage that's non conducting region. and finally for large reverse bias breakdown may take place so there will be also breakdown region but we are not interested in this region so i did not draw it the this one the forward characteristics is important for this switch so the switching potential vp is eta vbb so eta is fixed for a particular device but we can vary this supply voltage and which will vary the switching potential the potential at which the switch will move from off to on condition so that can be tuned by vbb there is some control so it is called transistor if it was a simply diode it was fixed we can control the firing put in the switch for switching potential by simply varying this external supply connected across this so it is called a transistor একটু একবার রিড আউট করে নিই তাতে তোমাদের বুঝতে সুবিধা হয় মেকানিজম যেটা বললাম এটা অ্যাকসেপ্ট করলে তো এ পর্যন্ত হয়েছে V is applied and V is increased pain junction reverse bias আমি তো ছোট করে করে লিখেছি ধরতে অসুবিধা হবে rather than we will call it is apply 50.5 volt that take it a gross sector power switch so we will call the firing potential simply as eta vb that means if we increase the voltage slightly above this vp it starts on so pin junction reverse bias till v is less than this eta vbb and the reverse current flows to the junction so that is the region one called cut off region or forward non conducting region it is forward bias still it does not conduct so the name forward non conducting now when v just ex exceeds vp then current is ip dekho eta kintu ami forward bias positive side e ekechi chotto current current is ip the pn junction forward bias holes are injected into bar and dragged by the electric field due to supply due to presence of vbb towards b1 because this region is grounded so they will be dragged by this due to this negative potential here conductivity of the portion of the bar between p region and b1 increased consequently rb1 decreases ie increases voltage drop of across rb1 drops that means this is at same potential and voltage drop at this point is less so forward bias is increased stronger forward biasing of pn junction so stronger hole injection takes place so this point will this regenerative process will continue rb1 decreases i increases process continues till our ve is vb valley voltage 
I mean, it is the peak current IP. This is very small, and this is the lowest voltage when it appears here in the on state. It is the minimum voltage, so it is VVV, valley voltage VV, and I is corresponding volt current is called valley current IV. So region two appears called negative resistance region and occurs due to regenerative conductivity modulation. If we have a SCR before, then in case of SCR, similar negative resistance region appears, but that appears due to separate physical phenomena. Now, when I is greater than IV, voltage in emitter and base V1 starts rising again. And region 3 called saturation region or forward conducting region. So when IE is less than IP, the device is in off state. IE less than IP, device is in off state. And when IE is greater than IV, device in on state. So we can use UJT as switch and VP the firing potential, the breakdown uh, switching potential. It is VP is eta VVP switching potential. So varying VVP, VP can be varied. Eta fixed direct fabrication. Now, the location of this P, small P junction, will control the property of this switch. For any switch, two important parameters are once the switching potential at which the transition will take place from off to on. The device will move from off to on. And the other one is the switching speed. How fast the device moves from off to on state. How fast they can assume the on state from off state. So the if this point is placed in the towards B2, closer to B2. And the middle you can say, if it placed anywhere here, then what will happen? RB1 increases. So our standard intrinsic standard ratio is increased. We cannot move it. The manufacturer, if manufacturer place PDN, small PDN, the upper half closer to B2, then RB1 will increase longer on side RB1 and then our eta will increase. That means the switch for same VVV switching potential will increase in the second UJT where it is placed here. So switching potential high means the off and on states are separated by a larger voltage. So secured switching. That means if switching potential becomes too, too small, then some unintentional switching may take place. We do not want the switch beyond. We did not apply the adequate potential, but due to some stray voltage and noise and etc., if switching potential is very small, unintentional switching may occur. So higher the switching potential, the switch is more switching operation is more robust. It is well the off and on states are separated well so noise immunity is greater any straight voltage cannot make this transition so it is more immune to noise so switching potential always is higher is desired for particularly power switch but in that case the switching the injected carriers from this Median, we will have to cover a, a, a longer distance. They will be injected, they will be they will drift and reach here to form the eye. So here the injected holes will take will have to cover a longer distance, means the switching switch will be slower. So if we put place it in the upper side, then switching potential increases, which is a positive point for the device but it makes the switch slower. Switching time high, so it is the negative point for this device. 
Now opposite is the case. If we place the junction in the lower half closer to B1, then switching potential is smaller. It is the immunity is sacrificed and but the inducted holes now will move a shorter distance, so they will come first. That means the switch is now faster. So there are two criteria. So by overall, like optimizing these two property, the P region is more or less placed near the junction, not exactly for normally for UGT, this NT6 standard ratio is of the order of 0.6 slightly placed slight closer to B2. Oof, oh, the application to chat kore bole ni, kale UGT shesho jab. So this is the characteristic. So if we vary the VBB in second year, first same, we will Study the IV characteristics of UJT. So we will have, keep your VBB fixed. Say your eta is 0 0.6. So if you keep the VBB at um, 10 volt, then it will fire. So it will switching will take place at 6 volt. If you make VBB 20 volt, it will be switching potential will be 12 volt. So we can control this this flexibility comes through this configuration and these are the VBB and IV points and if we do not connect the VBB at all, the, there is no, this B1, B2 is open. If we do not connect this VBB, then simply this diode is present and once we start apply this, it will forward bus and current will flow in this circuit. So this lower half that means it will operate simply as a pn junction no forward non-conducting region like this will appear there will be no such region this switching potential pp and we will get this type of characteristics this one right from g it will start conducting there, there may be some cutting voltage but it will simply behave as a injunction diode so once they switch is to on state they will be clustered more or less for different pbb and even for pbb zero characteristic will be clustered so application as switching as a switch application of ugt as a pulse generator as a sawtooth generator sawtooth generator means the time base we apply to the oscilloscope this type of waveform means our voltage is linearly put increasing with time and it falls abruptly and again the new cycle starts this is the sawtooth waveform and this type of waveform is useful for the oscilloscope cathode oscilloscope now we will find how a UGT operates as a relaxation oscillator Relaxation oscillator means oscillator which generates non-sinusoidal waveform. Normally oscillator we get sinusoidal waveform, but no, relaxation oscillator is the oscillator generating non-sinusoidal waveform. So this is the circuit. This UJT, B1, B2 external terminals and emitter terminals. So we have connected this VBB here and there is some capacitor and resistor connected between B1 and emitter and here between B2 and emitter, there is a resistance. Now, what happens? At T0, at time T0, Ma'am, 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 now 
जाओ सब क्लासेस जाओ 